Three shows Phenomenal. the shot is not good. The rebound is taken out of there by Mike Butler. Again, the little man has the basketball. He whistles across the timeline with the feet of Red Robin. Nobody is seated in the building. We go now to Beatty. Now to Butler. Butler with a driving layup. He scores with 21 seconds to go in the ball game. And that makes it 129-118. Dampier with the drive all the way to the glass. He missed the shot. A fight for the rebound, and Beatty ends up with a basketball in the backhand. It pass now to Jackson. Ten seconds to go. A bullet pass to Red Robin. He scores! Seven seconds to go. 131-118. Here's a jumper by Cincy Powell. Three-point shot by Cincy Powell with two seconds to go. The Stars have won the championship of the American Basketball Association. Beatty is holding the ball. There it is. The ball game is over. I'm Bill Howard, voice of the Utah Stars. It was a memorable night on May 18, 1971, when the Utah Stars beat the Kentucky Colonels in game number seven for the American Basketball Association Championship. Now, athletically, it was Utah's finest hour. It was really game number 102 in a rugged professional basketball season that began back on June 10, 1970, when owner Bill Daniels announced that the Los Angeles Stars would become the Utah Stars. He also made a promise to pledge that Salt Lake City would become the Green Bay professional basketball. How well has he succeeded? Well, if 13,000 avid fans jammed into the Salt Palace for key games, over 363,000 total admissions for the entire season are yardsticks. The Stars boosters include the young, the elder, the professional man, the blue-collar worker, the housewife all of whom dig the action, the emotion of professional basketball. The Salt Palace is another reason for success. This beautiful, modern, functional facility is a major league building in every way and was the prime reason for the club's switch to Utah. This kind of public acceptance of a first-year franchise in a city of less than half a million people Putting it all together behind the scenes is Vince Barilla, president and general manager. Barilla, a former college and pro basketball star in his own right, knows the game inside and out. Professional ABA basketball was introduced to Utah's on October 14, 1970. It was a somewhat shaky debut for a while, and skeptics predicted tough sledding for the young club. Yet it was the rugged, fast-moving style of ABA ball that the Utah fan was looking for. It brought together the BYU backer, the University of Utah supporter, as well as Utah State and Weber State fans into one huge cheering section. Toss in the bands, the pretty girls, the solid promotions, along with a three-point play and that dazzling red-white-blue ball, and you have the best show in town.
pro basketball is contact. It's muscle. It's a war in sneakers. A ticket to a Stars game affords the enthusiastic Utah fan his opportunity to relate to violent action at a safe distance. A great coach goes hand in hand with a great team. And the Utah Stars 1970-71 team was the greatest ever. Take Big Z, the big man of center. You just can't say enough about Zelmo Beatty. He's played in both leagues. He does just about everything well. He's a tough physical player under the basket. He's a gentleman off the court. A favorite of everyone. I had enjoyed the year. It's just, just about what I expected to be. The league improved. The each team got better. We had the type of year that I was hoping we were going to have. And it turned out to be just a tremendous year. I'm not, uh, I, I've got no regrets at all. As a matter of fact, I'm looking forward to coming back next year. Then there's the remarkable Willie Wise, who began the season as a bench warmer and ended it as one of the best forwards in the ABA. Wise did it all this past season. He was a fine scorer. He rebounded superbly. It, however, is his defensive play which places Willie in a category all by himself. Wise well may be the next superstar in the ABA. Also at forward, Red Robbins at 6'8", 190 pounds. He's been described as a walking one iron. His angular frame is deceptive, however. He can slam the ball back into an opponent's face on defense. Or go on to score 20 points in a single game, devastating the opposition. Merv Jackson, the magician. He's smooth, he's quick, and he's a winner. Like Robbins, he's not physically strong but uses finesse to clear that soft 15 to 20 foot. Glenn Combs, a guard, came to the Stars in mid-season from Texas. Combs, the Kentucky general, is a pure shooter. Ron Boone came with Combs in that trade at the Utah Stars. Boone's specialty was excitement, perpetual motion, Speed, rebound, and power. He has it all. Then there's George Stone, six feet seven. He's probably the best shooter in the American Basketball Association. Stone has a rare talent. He can come off the bench cold and break a ball game wide open. He sparked Utah to a 120-118 win over Indiana in the first game of the playoff series and provided the same kind of performance against Kentucky in the championship finals. Not to be forgotten, Mike Butler, the little guy, at six feet two inches. He's quick, elusive, a fine driven, excellent ball handler, whose specialty is the three-point play. And finally, the rookies, Rod McDonald, labeled the Rocket, a product of the West Coast. And Dick Namelka, an All-American, a BYU graduate. Namelka figured in key games during the season and the championship series against Kentucky. He's one of the best three-point shooters in the ABA. When the Stars weren't playing at home in the Salt Palace, they were on the road. The schedule included 84 regular season games and 18 playoff games. Over 100,000 air miles flown following a schedule that would kill a traveling salesman. In such establishments as the Long Island Garden in New York, the Greensboro Coliseum in North Carolina, or Freedom Hall in Louisville, Kentucky, the stars were definitely not made to feel welcome. In Kentucky, you run into such unpleasant characters as Cincy Powell, Louis Dampier, and Dan Issel, the Colonel's superstar. Issel was the league's high score as a rookie, and on a good night, he can shoot you right off the floor. You 
part company with Issel and the Colonel, only to meet up with Charlie, Scott, and the Virginia Squires. Now, Scott is kind of a whirling dervish in basketball trumps. With Issel, he was co-rookie of the year in the ABA. He led the ABA All-Star team, and he made the ABA All-Pro team. The road to the ABA championship is a rocky one, and there's always a David ready to smack down the mighty league-leading Goliaths. In this case, it's Rick Berry, the New York Nets superstar. Now, Berry had a fantastic career as a professional. He led the NBA in scoring, and he led the ABA in point production. If you come away from these encounters with the ABA superstars unscathed, you've still got to face the Indiana Pacers led by the great Mel Daniels. Now take Indy Night, for instance. Indiana's hallmark is really plural, basketball and auto racing. Bill Daniels, owner of the Utah Stars, is involved in auto racing, too. On Indy Night, Daniels presented his car, the Utah Stars Special, along with famed Indy drivers Mario Andretti, Lloyd Ruby, Al and Bobby Unser, and Salt Lake's Dick Simon. Of 12 meetings during the regular season, six games were won by the Stars, six by the Indiana Pacers, and every game was a barn burn. That's first point. Yeah. This lovable character is a nice guy everywhere but on the bench. He's Bob Leonard, coach of the Indiana Pacers. Leonard has had his good moments, like in 1970, when he won the ABA title. He in the Salt Palace, he hasn't fared so well, however, being picked out of two games for voicing rather strong Come on, Rick! Help me! Help me! Then there's the emotional Lou Carnesecca, coach, rookie coach of the New York Nets. Carnesecca's histronics from the bench would put a Shakespearean actor to shame. This was his first year in professional basketball. He used to bleed like this for 26 college games. Now he's faced with an 84 game schedule. It can be a long, long winter. This was the mob scene at the Salt Lake International Airport, April 29th. The day before, the Utah Stars had done the impossible. They had taken the Western Division title by beating the Pacers in Indiana in a pressure-packed seven-game series. It was the Stars' day, and the treatment was definitely red carpet. These are the Stars, and they are the champions of the Western Division of the ABA. A fantastic crowd here at the airport to welcome our champion, Larry <laughs> To reach this point in the playoffs, the Stars first had to dispose of the Texas Chaparrales, led by a former Utah star, Donnie Freeman. This the Stars did in an easy four-game series, setting the stage for the Indiana encounter. It was like the Battle of the Bulge, Wake Island, and Guadalcanal all rolled in a row. General George Patton the Buffalo. The Stars fans loved it too. The series drew a total of 75,353, with 12 to 13,000 avid onlookers jammed into the salt pans. In addition, many thousands enjoyed the Stars on their television sets throughout the Intermountain West. the battle when they dropped the Western Division title to Indiana during regular season play. Now, however, it appeared they were about to win the basketball war. The stage was set for the final series with Kentucky, 
for the ABA championship. Two former teammates with the Boston Celtics, Bill Sharman of the Stars, Frank Ramsey of the Colonels, about to match wits with look-alike offenses. It should have been a familiar game plan. It belonged to Boston in the days of Russell, Cousy, Sharman, and Ramsey. The matchup was one of power versus finesse. The powerful Dan Issel. Against the smooth and polished Zelmo Beatty. The brute strength of Cincy Powell. Against the lightning, bewildering moves of Willie Watt. It went a seven full games with Utah dropping a heartbreaker in Louisville in overtime. But the stars were not to be denied. The season ended with a pulsing 131-121 win, and it was time for celebration. watch represents only a small part of the excitement generated by the sport of the 70s professional basketball Utah star style you no doubt have read and heard about the merger of the two professional basketball leagues which means that in the future the action promises to be even better you'll have the opportunity to see all of the great teams and great individual stars the Milwaukee Bucks with Lou Alcindor the New York Knicks with Willis Reed and the Los Angeles Lakers with Wilt the Stilt Chamberlain the best way to assure yourself a seat for every fabulous second is to purchase season tickets. Those who buy now will have the priority for the same excellent seats year after year. Don't be shut out by the sellout crowds. Call the Utah Stars office, 355-2891, and a member of our staff will be most happy to assist you. Here come the stars, here come the stars, here come the stars. 